Hello friends, welcome back to our YouTube channel DS Tech Mirror. Topic for today video is Power Apps Component. I will cover this topic in two videos. This is part one. In this video, I will cover all the nitty gritty details about the Power Apps Component. And in part two, I will cover the demo part. So let's get started. I'll start with what are Power Apps Components. So components are reusable building blocks in Canvas app. Components can be used across multiple apps using component library. I will try to explain you with a very basic example. Let's say you are creating 15 apps for one of the organization. So more or less the header component, the footer component would be same across all the apps. So consider a scenario where you know you are creating all these header and footer multiple times from scratch across this 15 application so definitely this is not a good and recommended practices because we should try to find a way how we can reuse these components across multiple apps so in power apps how we can reuse it we can create a component library inside a component library we can create one header component then we can use this header component in our apps all the apps which we will be creating in that particular environment we can use it similarly we can create multiple components in a component library and then we can use it across all our apps. Components allow us to use custom properties. Now when you are creating a header component, definitely this header component 90% or 80% will remain the same across all the apps but there would be minor changes. Let's say the header or the let's say the heading part in the header. So this heading will may change uh, or it will it it may change across the app. So what we can do, we can create a property called input property or output property. I will tell you the difference. We have properties inside components and using these properties, we can make our uh, you know component configurable. So there are two types of property called input property and output property. Input property is to pass data to the components to use within. Output properties to get data or state from the components. If you want to make it configurable, we will use an input property because this is something which we will pass from the apps to the components. And output properties which component will pass from the component to the app. You know, let's start with this creating a component library and, and let me show you one of the components. So what I will do, I will go to my power apps, make.powerapps.com. Over here you could see this component library. If this option is not available uh, in your left navigation, what you can do, you can click on this more and discover all and from here you will be able to see the option. If you want, you can also, uh, you know, pin it and then it will be available in your left navigation. Otherwise, you can unpin it. So now this component library is available in my left navigation. To create a new component library, what I can do, I can click on new component library and give a name. For this particular demo, I will give a name called ds tech mirror demo and then i will say create this component library what it is looking simple you know like a normal canvas app nothing much difference but over here i will show you a few basic differences which you should see here you could see this option called custom property so whenever you will create any custom property over here we have certain types called input property and output property at the time of demo i will explain you how you can use the input property or how you can use the output property so whatever the components you will create inside this let's say we are creating this one component one for now i what i will do i will simply put one rectangle i will not do anything and i will say click on save this is component one and then i will click on publish i'll click on publish this is published now and we have component one i will rename it i will say test component or i will say yeah test component okay this is my component again i have to save these changes then i will quickly publish it and now i will go back leave and then you will be seeing that now a new component library got created called ds tech mirror demo okay now if i'll try to open it again what you will see the component will be present inside it okay. if you want to create another component again you can click it from here new component i will say rename test component 2 i will click on save 
publish publish this version and I click on back so this is how you can create different components in your component library now let's quickly see how you can use this component in your canvas app so for that what I will do I will click on create I will click on blank app and I will name it to be deleted because I will delete this app again this is not a demo this is just I you know I am trying to explain the basic concepts so for example now how I can include the component in my canvas app so for that what you have to do you have to click on this plus sign in the left navigation and then you will see this option at the bottom called get more components over here you could see this component library all the component libraries are available because in my uh, I have three components libraries so all the components libraries are available over here you could see DS Tech Mirror demo and inside this there are two components if there are more components so those will appear over here only so I have created one test component just a blue rectangle and I'll click on import if I go back components got added now how we can add it to the uh, screen for that what you have to do go to insert library component and you could see this test component over here the moment you have added this test component this component got added over here so this is how you can use this component across any apps and with the, with the help of this you can reuse your component and you can reduce your coding efforts so this is the basic of components and now this will answer your two question what is component and why we need component now i'll go back to my slide now I have covered input property and output property. Input property is if this component is there, what uh, you know the value which it will provide to this app will be the output property, and any property which we have to supply to this component will be the input property. For example, if there is some heading over here, and from this this app will provide that value to the header or anything that will become the input property. So very basic. Now. If you update component definition, all instances will get updated after you publish. So, for example, this component we have used across 15 apps. Now, if you wanted to make any change, so what you have to do, you need not to update in each and every app. Just go to your component library, update it, and whenever you know user will open the app, they will see a you know option to that there is an update available for your component, and they can click on it, and it will automatically get updated. So you need not to you know go to each and every app and then update it components helps to do collaborative development if you are a power apps developer you must be aware that collaborative development is a pain in power apps we have an option using github but that is also limited to different screens multiple developers cannot work on the same screen i have already created a demo how you can do collaborative development using github uh, the link is in the description box below if you're interested you can have a look at that particular video another option could be you can break your development of the power apps into multiple components and then individual developers can work on this component and then you can simply integrate it in your app so this is another way now there are certain limitation with this power apps component so component library does not support power automate so it will you cannot create a power automate if there is a certain uh, if there is any requirement which requires the use of power automate that for that particular purpose you cannot create a power apps component it cannot connect to data sources create collection forms within a component so inside component library connection to data sources are not supported you cannot create a collections all these you know business transformation or business logic uh, using collections or power automate or data sources is not possible so component supports set function but does not support update context function that means uh, component support global variable but it does not support local variable so this other option called allow customization if this property is part of the component library if this is enabled then user can edit this component in their individual apps but the moment they will edit it the connection with the component library will not remain it will get breakdown and then it will become a local copy of the component and they will not receive any future updates but i'll try to explain you uh, for that what i will do i will open a duplicate tab and i'll go back to the component library and this is my component library ds tech Mirror demo if you see over here for this particular uh, component allow customization is true 
Now for test component true, let me make it false. And over here, what I will do, I will add another rectangle and I will simply change the color, nothing else. Okay, let me change the color to, uh, let's say yellow, that's it. I will click on save and publish. Now what I will do, again, uh, I'll add this component over here. I'll go to plus sign, get more component. And I'll go the component this time. Now it got imported, but to add it to the app, you have to click on insert from the ribbon, library components, and then add both test component. I'll go back test component two. Now you will see the difference between this component. Let me just put them one after the other. Okay. Okay. So this one support uh, customization. So and. Uh, this does not support. So if I go to the blue one over here, I could set an option called edit component. If I go to this one, there is no option to edit the component. And if I make an, uh, let's say if I click on this edit component, you would see a, uh, you know, warning message over here. If you want to edit this component, you can either create a local copy in this app or open the component library and edit the component there. So I'll say create a copy. And the moment I said create a copy, it got created over here inside the components now. So I can make any change over here. Let's say I change the color from here. I make it to green. I have to just save. And then these changes will appear in the app. So now you have changed the color of this particular component. So you will see there is no impact over here because this is, uh, you know, still connected to the component which we have created at the library level. If you wanted to use this component, so what you have to do, you have to click on insert and under custom, you will see this component called test component under two. And then you will see this one created with green. So now there are three components. These two are still at the library level. Because uh, allow customization was set to true, true. So the moment you said like click on edit component, it created a local copy over here. You make any changes and then you can edit again in your screen. And if you want, you can remove it. So this is how this allow customization works. So I will again go back to my slide. So this allow customization I have already covered. And when a component is updated from the component library in the app, Maker will see the notification to update while working in the studio. App Maker can review and then click on update button to update it. So, uh, as I said, now if there is a change to update the headers in your 15 app, so what you can do, you can update your component in the library and then open your app in the app maker in the studio, you will see an option to update there is no need to make all the changes again you will simply see a button to update and you will update it and your you know changes will be reflected in the app or app maker can click on check for updates at the app level there is another option if the a button is not available i will show you so if i'll go from here now in the power apps if you wanted to update any of the component what you can do and if you're not getting any option automatically to update it click on this uh, plus icon Click on this ellipsis three dots at the top and you will see click check for component library updates. See there are no component library to be updated. So this is how you can update automatically. You need not to uh, do any code changes. Next is component library cannot be deleted if the component is used in canvas. App. So definitely it makes sense because it is connected. So it will not allow you to delete it. You have to remove the component from the app and then only you can delete the component library. If a component library is shared, it can be used by others to edit the component, import the component. If shared as co-owner, can be shared, edit but cannot be deleted or change the owner. So that's the only difference. Now uh, I have covered almost all the concepts related to the components. In my next video, I will cover the demo. Let me show you what we are going to develop as part of the demo. We will be creating a simple uh, header component. I will show you which I have created over here and in the demo i will create it along with you guys from scratch so this is the component which i have created and you would see uh, which is the header component and there's another component which i have created progress indicator so we will be creating header component as part of the demo 
these are different uh, properties which I have created like header color user will be able to change header height user can change and the title and this title user can change uh, in from the canvas app okay so this is uh, this I will cover as part of my next video before I close today's video let me just give you a quick recap what we have learned today today we have learned what are power apps components power apps components can be used to create reusable components if there is any module or any you know component required across multiple apps no need to create it multiple times create a component library and uh, create that component inside it and you can uh, use it across all your apps inside the environment and what is power apps component power apps component library is nothing it is kind of a special canvas app which will let you create multiple components inside it it has two property input property output property input property which will go to the component output property which will go from the component to the app okay if you will update the component it will reflect in all your apps it will help you to do collaborative development there are certain limitations it will not allow power automate it will not let you use data sources collection you can only use local variable allow customization i have covered and then uh, again how you can update it you can check for updates manually uh, through that uh, three buttons from at the top which i have already shown you so guys that's it for today's video so guys that's it for today's video if you like this video please like and share the video and subscribe to the channel to get notification for our upcoming videos Till then, much love, keep learning, thank you.